And let's start with what you do. How would you describe your food? Hi, uh, good morning Delhi. The journey I took from there was very simple. Uh, I tried to, to, to destroy a cuisine that was one of the oldest cuisines in the world. Uh, a cuisine that has existed and has given comfort food to everyone. At Gagan, what we thought to do was to create... I was sitting with a group of chefs and I was, I was actually not as famous as I am today. And there were 10 of us sitting there, a Japanese chef, a, a British chef, an Aussie, some Thai chefs. And we were on this chef lunch dinner kind of a thing happening and we were sitting and we talked. And they said, oh, we love curry. We love chicken tikka masala. We love curry. When we get drunk, we love curry with rice. And that's the comfort about Indian cuisine. And I, I loved it, but I hated it. Because that was the image of what was India and Indian cuisine globally. And that was the image that we've created globally also. Please understand. I've, I've eaten restaurants where I've been and all we cook is this 10 dishes. The Bombay Vindalu, the Madras chicken curry, the chicken tikka masala, and the Bengali fish curry. And that's what has become the staple Indian cuisine all over the world. And I thought like, and they would talk about then, oh, you know, I'm from France and we talk about French cuisine, it's novel, it's, it's, it's all about putting the right produce and all these things were happening. And they were right also because they took that much respect for to cook. We didn't run for money in France. They don't run, run for money in Japan. I mean, what they do is, how much respect they put in food itself. And that was a challenge to me and I took it and I said, but one day I'll make you realize that Indian food would go to a level where it would get its due respect. And that was a challenge I took at Gagan. So. When you talk about your food, people use terms like molecular to describe what you're doing. How would you characterize it? Well, I, I Actually, my, my guru in uh, what I'm doing today is, uh, is Farhan and the first day I was at his, his, his lab and I said, I'm here to learn molecular cuisine and he said like, there's nothing called molecular. He, he tried to turn away from it. And uh, then I thought, what do I do? So I, 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 I came back, I said, if I use molecular and say it, it will be great. I mean, what not, I'll get all the publicity saying molecular Indian cuisine. And then I said that, but Farhan would be very unhappy out of me. It would make a mockery of him and me. So I thought, why not use something which I have been using in my music? And uh, uh, I thought, why not do progressive cuisine? And because cooking is pr a progress. It's a progress. It's a step forward. And you keep changing and you keep progressing. And nobody can complain because there is no reference to go back to. There's no... You c there's no Bible, there's nothing to go back. You can't even go and check on Google the recipes that we do. There's no, no head and no tail. We destroy the cuisine. So that's what I do. I do a progressive Indian cuisine. Okay. I'm going to move this slightly away to talk a little bit about you because you're a person everyone now has heard of. Everyone in the world of food all over the world. But we don't necessarily know that much about you as a chef. Where did you learn how to become a chef and how did your journey start? <laughs> I, I, this is a very respectable hall and I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a rebel of the industry, you know. Uh, I met a guy, uh, uh, the poor guy who was sitting there, uh, Namudri. Yeah, and he said, the moment I walked into the hall, he said, Chef, I want to speak in the stage. I said, why? What has happened? I'm angry. I want to talk against all this that is happening in here. I said, relax, you'll get your time when you are famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, till you don't, I mean, and he, he has the perfect combination. He's a half Bengali and a half Malayali. So they know how to protest in Kerala and they know how to protest in Bengal. <laughs> and and, and he, he, I like his, his aggression towards. Uh, I know him for a long time. I mean, uh, so I mean, uh, yeah, I am a rebel. I was, I was literally, literally kicked out of from, from a hotel here. Yeah. I was literally kicked out. This is the Taj, right? The, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> tell the story. Uh, tell the story. Aap ki fal paana. Now tell the story. Tell the story. Him and kill me. Yeah. No. See, I, I literally was. You were thrown out by Arvind. You Arvind Sarath was your guru, right? Yeah, he was my guru. I'm, I'm, and no, then tell I was, the tell the story properly. Yeah. So I was kicked out of the hotel here. Uh, why? Because uh, 
I didn't even spend time for cooking. I was, uh, see. Uh, so what were you doing? Yeah, I was <laughs> in a were very wrong. <laughs> I was in a very wrong relationship at that time. I, I fell in love in <laughs> with a young girl at that time when I was young. This I'm is the Calcutta Taj or Delhi Taj? This is the Delhi Taj Palace. Taj Palace, all right. And the guys would say, "Hey, you are not working for 12 hours." You're not giving that hours. And I would always say that why cooking has to be compared with hours. That's why the first law I made in Gagan was you can't cook more than nine hours. Our restaurant kitchen opens at two o'clock and we are ready to serve dinner at six o'clock. And we only have one refrigerator, which is the smallest refrigerator in the top hundred list, I can guarantee in all those restaurants. And they are not allowed to cook and keep. We, we, we follow these things because these rebel, the things that you don't do in a hotel, or you, we do in our restaurant. We don't wear a chef cap. Okay, but why were you thrown out from Taj? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was thrown out because I was not even showing up. I was, I was so against. So in love. So in love, and I was so against of what was happening with food. So it this was, is Taj Palace. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This is me. Please, this is very personal. Please don't quote me on it. I love Taj. Please. Okay. <laughs> Just between <laughs> him and the 500 of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, please, I, 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 I am not here. <laughs> but you still have fond memories of the Taj in your time there, right? Completely, because Chef Bakshi Dean was here and I was telling him that uh, you're still trying to, like, that was Bakshi, no, hey, quiet, quiet, don't be too excited, like, sit down. <laughs> He's still that, he, ha he has that aura. And Bakshi, when Chef Is Heman… He here? Is Dean here in the audience? Yeah, he's there, he's there, yeah. I Dean, question, you had any idea this guy would grow up to be so famous? That's not the answer question I asked. Do you have any idea he'd grow up to be famous? You know, I'll tell one thing which I've never told him. Uh, he asked me to make demi glaze. Him and Chef DN Sharma was there. Yeah, he's, and still there, was, there. he's still there. Yeah, he's still there. yeah. And there was this uh, Chef Ti uh, Tiger. Uh, I forgot his name. One of the chefs. We used to call him Tiger. So they used to tell me, "Can you make demi glaze?" So my demi glaze was like every day banana, and they never tasted. He used to throw it. Like, never taste it. I said, why you don't taste it? So one day what I did, I started, I, I, sorry, but I did that time. I used, to, I used to take demi glaze every day, 100 ml, and hide it in the kitchen. And give the same thing back to him. <laughs> <laughs> because I, yeah, I'm putting like 12 hours of effort, demi glaze, Raymond Blanc, following all that books. And it was like, <laughs> so what's the point? I, so what I used to do was, I used to go to the main kitchen, take five demi glaze, Mix it all, reduce it and make, give a demi glaze. So one day, he loved the demi glaze. He said, how did you make What did you put? I didn't even tell him what did I put. I put the demi glaze from the banquet. I took the demi glaze from the Fontana. I took the demi glaze from his kitchen and mixed it and add my own things into it. So, I mean, this was me as a chef. And this is personal because I am mad. I'm a, I'm a completely lost soul in a kitchen. I can't even run the kitchen as a chef. I run as a cook. I am a stationed cook in my restaurant. I don't run it. I don't run the pass. I don't like computers. And I said, today I need a lot of coffee because I'm supposed to sit and watch people. Okay, all right. So you leave the Taj at some stage and you start your own catering business in Calcutta. Completely, right? completely. Tell us about that. So I left this Taj thing and then uh, I, got, I got married for the first time, which didn't, which didn't exist for a long time. But with this girl, I started a catering business. I went back to Calcutta. Uh, it was you are from Calcutta. Yeah, I'm from Calcutta actually. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, in, uh, I started a restaurant, a, a catering ki kitchen, just to cater to, to weddings and things. So I thought all the caterings are these guys who do with Thakurs, you know, with or Maharajas. Calcutta is famous for Munna Maharaj or the Bengali Thakur or Bijuli Grill. And they would wear lungis and dhotis and cook. So I said, why would they all wear look? I'm from this industry. Why don't I make a nice kitchen and just cook catering? And then two years, I was actually, it's a very sorry time that I had, that actually I was supplying food. And I have the guts to say today, because I'm famous, that I was actually on my bike, sitting with tiffin carriers and giving food at 13 rupees to Pizza Hut employees. Really? Yes. The employee food? The employee food of Pizza Hut because I had to survive that time. Two years I did it, 2002, 2003. And I met the owner of Pizza Hut in a restaurant. I told him he was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> that once Gagan cooked for his employees. <laughs> but so, yeah. So then you leave Calcutta, you go to Bangkok, 
and you work for an Indian restaurant. No, but actually that was two years. Okay. And then, then thankfully, Gurgaon thing happened in Calcutta and with what thing? like the uh, IT industry happened okay. that's and all science that. Science city. Yeah, that's yeah. Science city happened and all the thing happened. And then we became, before I left Calcutta, I wanted to be the best. So we did like, we had 220 employees and 6,000 meals a day. That big? That big. And then I left with uh, uh, a divorce petition in my hand and five hundred dollars and I ended up in Bangkok. Who got the business? She got and she closed all in right, one year. Right, okay. yeah. So then you went to Bangkok with nothing? Virtually. Nothing, nothing. With and then? then I did a restaurant called Red which actually was uh, a three month contract but uh, as a typical Indian, no? Uh, uh, yeah, next time I will not talk out there, I know how it feels here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, when I went to uh, Bangkok, I was a typical Indian, a chef. If you leave your country, you never come back. So I thought that is the perfect example for me to escape my... Because there were complaints and Bengalis love to complain. They say the Rasagola was not gold enough. So I said I didn't make it, the Mithai wala made, but they still would complain. And uh, I was very frustrated. So I said, I let me go to Bangkok, do this restaurant, Red, uh, offered for three months and I never came back. At some stage you decided you wanted to go to the El Bulli Academy to learn those techniques. How did that realization happen? See, it was, uh, uh, El Bulli was, uh, I was falling from 2007 that food was changing. The whole focus about food from France was going to Spain. Everybody in, in France, I mean, we talked about chefs who were in America or in France and like then came Thomas Keller era and then came uh, sorry, El Bulli. And what is El Bulli? What are they cooking? Why is the food not plated enough? Why is the food a bite? Why is it 35 courses? And then from 2007 I started following and then I thought and when I read more I thought they call it smoking, we call it dhuwa. They call it drying, we do our papas on the chat or anything that we dry, we use the sun. Uh, they call it uh, molecular gastronomy and of course there's a lot more in the subject but uh, they burn the things, we do burning of our kebabs. There's a lot of common synchronization. The only thing is we have never understood the science of our cooking. So I thought before I do my restaurant, let me call up El Bulli and go and work with them. So I would get the exposure from my, my Bible, my, my, my Vatican. Was it difficult getting in? 20 calls and somebody got speak in English. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, I spoke with a lot of desperation and they allowed me in. And I think that was the last time they ever allowed an Indian inside. Because you're, yeah. <laughs> you're in fact the only Indian I know who come, who's come out of there, right? You're now the single most famous chef to come from El Bulli, but you were the only Indian there as well, right? See, uh, uh, yes, I saw uh, in the lab, there was a guy who was after me, but he was in the restaurant. But in the lab, I was the only Indian ever. And when I was leaving, there was a map there in the lab. It's called Alicia Foundation. And in that lab uh, map, they said, which flag do we put, Thailand or India? But I was happy to put India, actually, because I look Indian. So, so you I are Indian. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, yeah. So I, I went there, I got my nirvana, I got my knowledge. And then I started destroying the cuisine.